What's up guys, I'm Mad Morta, and in this video I'm going to be showing off one of my latest projects. On the left here we have a wave bird, and on the right here we have a wave bird. <laughs> so this is part of a larger project I've been working on, but this is a wave bird circuit board inside of a normal GameCube controller shell. And this does differ from a standard wave bird in a few ways. For starters, the start button is a clicky switch, like the Z button sort of, except that it's a little bit louder. The original one had a lower start button, so I had to relocate it with a tack switch, and the squishy tack switches were too tall. I'm personally okay with it, but I know it would bother some of you. Also, it does not have a channel switch, which again, I'm personally okay with because I don't think I've ever been in a room with more than two other wave birds being used at any given time. So it's not like I'm fighting over the channels. This one defaults to channel three, but you could have made it lucky number seven or whatever you wanted. And there was room to put the switch down here, but given how my drilling holes went for my battery, I'm gonna say it was a good idea not to drill a hole for that. So this also has an internal rechargeable battery pack because obviously putting double A's in here would be kind of a pain, even if you only have to do it once every few months. So, sorry, this is a Power A 2.4 volt battery pack for the Xbox One controller. And I'm really excited about this find because I'm really hoping that this will be the perfect battery pack for all of my WaveBird related projects because it's small, it's got a convenient charging board, it's just beautiful. So, the WaveBird normally turns off at a lower voltage, but I removed that switch in there, so it will function at a lower voltage. I assume the regular WaveBird would not operate at 2.4 volts, or if it did, it would turn off fairly quickly as the batteries got lower. This one is going to keep running until it can run no more, and we're going to find out exactly how long that lasts. So I will get back to you on that in the future. It may be a long time depending, because I know that the WaveBird lasts a really long time on batteries, and this is kind of a large battery for the WaveBird. So here is the power switch for the WaveBird, because obviously you don't want it on all the time, because it lasts only like a week, <laughs> and the the face didn't really have a place to put it. So that is really all the differences between this and a standard WaveBird. Everything feels exactly like it should, which is extremely uncommon for my projects. I'm really picky about my controllers, especially my GameCube controllers, because they're my favorite. And it feels like, like if this had a wire coming out of it, I would not know that it was modified. That's how perfect it is. The WaveBird circuit board just fits in there. You do have to trim it and re relocate a few things. I had to modify the shell in a couple little places. One of them was down here for the for the batteries, and then a couple little places up in here. But really, it it's almost an exact fit. So this is a WaveBird circuit board. So you can see kind of what I had to do to fit it in there. I cut from about over here, maybe right about there, up and passed through the middle of the start button, over here, down, and then made a circle around the D-pad. So everything in the middle here and everything down here was cut off. So this channel switch was cut off. That could have been wired back, like I said, but I chose not to. It is on channel three because that's what happens if you don't tell it to do a different channel, but you could pick a different channel. The switch, obviously I'm using a different switch with a different method for batteries. And everything else down here is regulation circuitry for the double A's that it normally uses. But short term, it's definitely running fine off of this. And so I'm, I'm really hopeful it's going to run fine for a very long time off of it and not be hurt by the lower voltage, but I won't know till I find out. So I am pushing the very limits of what the WaveBird can do to deliberately try and break it to find out what its limits are on abilities. So I did have a WaveBird where I removed every single capacitor on the board except for the two here which go to the crystal resonator on the back. And it worked fine for months and it never broke and I finally just decided that there was no point in continuing to play with it because it just refused to die. It just kept going. It never had any interference issues. It just it, it should have had some kind of issue, but it didn't. So it should need those caps, but 
I guess there's no, <laughs> the hardware is just so solid that you can remove a whole bunch of stuff with no ill effects. So I do have the entire circuit board mapped out. And if you check the description, then there is a link to all of the info I have on it. It has the entire circuit board sanded down and mapped out with nice colorful traces so you can see where everything goes and a Word document that explains what everything does and what it needs to boot, which is basically only a couple things. It needs the main chip, the EEPROM, the, a couple resistors on the front, this little chip board on the back, and the crystal resonator. That's all it needs is a couple, couple little components. So I am going to continue testing this and eventually I would like to make a circuit board that is where I can transplant these chips onto the circuit board and have convenient soldering tabs on it for the different buttons in order to put them into other controllers, like the N64 controller in particular, I would like to do. Although if you guys want to do them, feel free. <laughs> there is a trimming guide. If you just want to trim it and then hand rewire everything, you can. With this one, I just trimmed it. I rewired a few things, but it wasn't that hard. All the buttons and stuff were, they just fit. It just fit. They must have copy pasted everything from the original circuit onto here because it fits exactly. It looks and feels just like a regular wired controller. So I'm super excited about this discovery and I'm gonna continue working on the WaveBird. But in the meantime, here is a demo video for this controller so you know that it's not just a wired controller with the wire cut off. So let's get to that. Okay, so here we've got Smash Bros Brawl, which is just about all I've got on me. So that's what I'm gonna be using to test. And I'll try to get it to focus a bit better. Okay, well that's basically it. So it is a fully functional WaveBird and it has a rechargeable battery pack. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you subscribe to see more projects like this. Thanks guys.